Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about hi-fi, home theater, and headphones. And today, I'm talking about the five biggest mistakes I've made with home theater. Home theater mistakes. <laughs> so sit down, grab a cup of coffee. Let's make your home theater experience better. This video started off or it was going to be a review of the 5000 series center channel from Q Acoustics. Great speaker, phenomenal speaker, but how do you get an entire video out of reviewing a center speaker? I bought my first home theater receiver from a Sears in 2001, which means I've been into home theater for over 20 years at this point. I've always had a home theater system, a multi-channel system at least, and I've owned well over a dozen home theater receivers. Am I an expert on home theater? Absolutely not. However, I can share my experience with you and you may be surprised, you don't need to spend a ton on home theater. This is a center channel speaker. You'll notice you have one tweeter, two woofers or mid bass drivers, whatever you wanna call it. This is from Mono. Price. This is the C5 center channel speaker. In an ideal world, you would have three speakers that were identical. And instead of running this one horizontal, you would run it vertical for your center speaker. Because with designs like this, you get into what's called comb filtering. Comb filtering is simply cancelizations of specific frequencies depending upon how far off axis you are from the center of the speaker. Basically, that means if someone's sitting dead center to the center channel, then like if you shine a laser beam out of the tweeter, it would hit you in the head. That person's probably gonna be fine, but the people sitting to the side aren't gonna be so lucky. How much of an issue is it? I don't know, it can be an issue. And frequencies in dialogue can often be canceled out. And while a center speaker handles a lot of dialogue, it just doesn't handle dialogue. I think one of the biggest mistakes I've made in my home theater journey is not investing enough in my center channel speaker. One of the ways to somewhat mitigate the comb filtering effect is to get a three-way center channel and that basically has the tweeter stacked on top of a mid driver and then two woofers on either side. So in essence you kind of have a small two-way bookshelf sandwiched between two woofers or you can just take a two-way speaker and use that as your center channel. But the one thing that I've learned is I would rather have a speaker that's horizontal like this with two decent woofers and a tweeter than a smaller two channel speaker just as a center channel because there is a lot of info. More explosions, more need for big heavy duty woofers than surround speakers in my opinion. Your center channel is your most important speaker in your setup in my opinion. Arguments could be made about subwoofers. We'll talk about that next. But I do wanna talk a little bit more about the Q Acoustics, the 5000 series center speaker, because while it is just an MTM, it is an exceptional one. The Q Acoustics 5020, one speaker of the year for me, these speakers are not inexpensive, but they're not super expensive either. The 5020 comes in around $900. The 5040, the floor standards I have upstairs in my home theater are $1,500 a pair. That's still very expensive, but not out of line. And for the quality of sound that you're getting, it's a near perfect speaker, in my opinion, from a sonic standpoint. You can get the bigger brother to the 5040, the 5050s. The center channel, $600, kind of expensive. I get it. Here's the one good thing about the 5090 center speaker. Oftentimes dialogue on a center speaker will be pushed forward. I think this is just supposition on my part. I think they're designing it that way so that you can hear vocals more clearly. The problem is when you push dialogue forward, so anything from probably 750 Hertz all the way up to 2000 Hertz, when you push that forward, number one, I get fatigue, which means if you're listening at louder levels for a long time, your ears just start to kind of ache a little bit. Number two, that dialogue doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel organic. It feels like the actors have a little bit of a mega horn, just a little bit. 
So everything around them sounds okay, but when they talk, it sounds like it's separated out. I think the 5090, even though it's just an MTM speaker, gets around some of this comb filtering effect by the design of the speaker itself. They have a new woofer, it's called the C3 Continuous Curve Cone, and you get better dispersion. How that affects comb filtering, I don't know. Most of my listening was done dead center on this, and I didn't do any measurements, so I can't say definitively that this speaker as an MTM design is any better than any other speaker when it comes to comb filtering or frequency cancellations off axis which again means just sitting next to the person that's dead center. Tweeter also isolated as best they can from the enclosure. So they did a lot to isolate the drivers from interacting with the enclosure. What I will say about this center speaker, the 5090, is it had the most realistic reproduction of vocals from an organic standpoint. Usually I lose baritone in a center channel, regardless of the manufacturer. Even on some three-way designs on center speakers, you lose that baritone. This, and not surprisingly, is perfect. It sounds identical to the 5020s. If anything, it has more punch than the 5020s. Frequency response is 57 up to 30,000. I crossed them over at 80. Nominal impedance of six ohms, minimum impedance of 3.2 ohms. So you may need a little juice on this one. I also plugged the ports in the back of the speaker. I generally do that on a center speaker because I feel like I can get resonance, not from the speaker, but from the cabinet. Cause I almost always have a center speaker in a cabinet. I know that's not ideal, but that's just the way I do it or that's the way I have to do it. So by plugging the port or ports on a speaker, in my experience, I have mitigated resonance in the cabinet. Center speaker, very, 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 very important. This could have been number one, but it's a subwoofer. If you're gonna be watching some serious cinema, home theater, maybe some Netflix, you want a powerful, capable subwoofer. It doesn't always have to be a big subwoofer, but generally in my experience, the bigger the better. Right now I have the RSL 12S Speedwoofer. It's huge though, it's the size of, a, it's bigger than a dorm fridge. Previous to that, I had kind of a mid-tier Klipsch 12 inch ported and it was great too don't freak out if you can't have two subwoofers none of our rooms are perfect unless it's like designed specifically to be a home theater or listing room nobody has a perfect room okay so for me get as much bass as you can stick it in the corner there are ways to pull down different frequencies if you get svs's subwoofers they have an app and in that app they have a three band parametric eq if you're having bass suckouts or huge boomy bass in certain parts of the room and you can't move the subwoofer you can mess around with that eq a little bit to try to bring it in line here's another thing that i've used to make my home theater better is using wireless subwoofer kits svs sells one it's basically a transmitter and receiver. You put the transmitter on your receiver and then you put the receiver on your subwoofer. Actually, RSL has an integrated receiver in their 10S subwoofer and you can buy their transmitter, put it on your receiver. That way you can put the subwoofer wherever you want within reason. I think you need to have line of sight and these aren't perfect. I've noticed clicking and popping when I'm not running any music or movies on wireless kits before. It doesn't really matter when you're watching a movie or listening to music, but it's a little bit distracting sometimes. So for me, I would buy the best subwoofer that you can and start with one of them. Don't buy two cheaper subwoofers and cheaper doesn't always mean worse, right? I guess don't buy two less quality subwoofers if you can buy one. Buy one now and then you can save up more later if you want a second subwoofer. Don't feel like you need two subwoofers right away. Number three, height channels. I had always used the bouncy bouncy Atmos speakers, the ones that just fire up and bounce off the ceiling. There was a significant difference when I took speakers and made them traditional height speakers. I use the A1 from Emotiva. Little speaker that lays flat against your wall and basically is like a wedge. 
goes right up to where your wall meets your ceiling. This far and away has made the biggest difference in my surround sound immersive experience. None of the upward firing Atmos speakers have been able to reproduce what just having two speakers where my wall meets my ceiling. It was transformative and they weren't that expensive. You can't get them anymore because that speaker line has been discontinued, but I think they were less than $200 when I bought them. There are other options out there too from Polk, OWM 10s or something like that. You can do something similar. SVS has speakers like that. I think Aperion has speakers like that. There's a lot of other manufacturers that basically have these on wall wedge shaped speakers. I'm gonna be adding something for my rear heights because it made such a huge difference. If you can do seven channels and do front height speakers, it really ups the experience with your home theater. Actually, I would probably opt for height speakers instead of surround speakers. I know that's crazy, but that has been my experience. Get yourself some height speakers and put them on the wall at ceiling height or about 10 feet up. One of the biggest mistakes I made was going too small on my surround speakers. I kind of always said, hey, just get a speaker. It's okay for surround speakers. Oof. I actually use the Q Acoustics Concept 30s as my surrounds, and that's a very expensive speaker. The only reason I use them is because I had them here and I was running Q Acoustics, everything else. It's $1,300. It is a five and a quarter inch bookshelf speaker. Usually in the past, I would just recommend any small speaker that you can mount on a wall to be a surround speaker. Putting a bigger surround speaker also leveled up my home theater. You don't need a huge one. I'm not saying get a tower speaker or a floor standing speaker, but having a larger bookshelf speaker as my surrounds also leveled things up. I have a very expensive home theater processor upstairs right now, the RMC1L. The problem is the room correction software that it comes with is Dirac, and I've never set it up. Why? Because it's pretty complicated to set up. And also I have constantly rotating equipment in and out and I'm moving rooms. So I set it up personally by hand. Two settings that impacted my enjoyment and experience the most were distances and levels. Distances and levels. And for distances, the only thing you really need is a tape measure. Sit where you're gonna sit and then measure, measure how far it is to your left speaker and then you pop that into the menu. Your right speaker, your center channel, your heights, all that stuff. Most receivers come with a room setup wizard. You put a microphone in the middle, it's gonna do all that by itself. However, I have noticed that sometimes it doesn't always get it right. So run the wizard and then double check. And then if it's wrong, fix it. Levels. Levels. Levels I think was the most important thing. And I just did it with my phone. So I use a app called Decibel X. It's a real-time analyzer, RTI, and a decibel meter. Real-time analyzer is important and extremely useful for other applications. But for this application, I was just using the decibel meter. And what I did was I ran a test tone and I just matched levels from each speaker. And by doing that in the seated position, you're not gonna have the same levels on every speaker. But in theory, you're gonna get the same loudness from every speaker, depending upon how your room is set up and where you're seated within the room. That made a huge difference in my listening. Trust the setup software, but verify that it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Most of the times, those two settings are fairly easy to find within the settings of your home theater receiver. So to recap, the five mistakes I've made is not getting a good enough center channel speaker. Center channel. Or getting a center channel speaker that has a wonky frequency response. You can't just EQ a bad speaker to sound like an awesome speaker. And the 5090 from Q Acoustics is exceptional. You're gonna have probably some comb filtering off to the sides. It's probably the best sounding center speaker that I've ever heard when I'm dead center to it. Get the biggest one that you can get because there's a lot of bass information that's going to that center channel too. Subwoofer. Subwoofer. Get the highest quality one that you can afford. Save up and get another one later if you want to. The companies I would recommend for subwoofers, RSL 
and SBS. There's some other good ones out there too, but those are the two that I have the most experience with. They're not cheap, but they're fairly affordable. You can get an SB1000 Pro from SVS for around $600. A lot of times scratch and dents or returns can be had for $500. Speedwood for 10S from RSL is less than $500. The 12S, which is huge and is better for home theater, is still under $1,000. If you have placement issues, use a wireless subwoofer kit. Height channel. Get height speakers. Oh my goodness, height speakers. They are so much better than the upward facing Atmos speakers. Get bigger surround speakers. You don't need huge ones, but get bigger surround speakers. And then verify that your measurements and levels are correct. Do those five things. I think you're going to be having a great time when you're watching Pumpkinhead, which incidentally was just remastered on 4K UHD. Pumpkinhead's actually a very good movie if you watch it. The guy that played Bishop in the Aliens movies plays the main character. Very good. Anyway, I hope you like this video. If you found any value in it, thumb it up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you want to support the channel, you can sign up for my Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man every Sunday night. We have Patreon only Zooms most of the time. Patreon only Discord, Patreon only Facebook group. You can use the links in the description. Most of those will be affiliate links, which means if you click any buy, I get a commission. It doesn't cost you any more though, so it's a great way to support the channel. You can also buy me a cup of coffee down at the bottom of the video. There's a thanks button. Put a little money in the tip jar, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu unless it's through your awesome home theater because you got a new sub, new center speakers, new height speakers, bigger surrounds. Most of the time you can cobble together a home theater system if you're anything like me and have a bunch of old speakers laying around. Binge listen or binge watch and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.